Hi, good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining me. And today I'm doing the presentation, the webinar on a COVID cancer explosion. At the moment, um, you will have access temporarily if you're also on YouTube, but it will only be for the first part. This presentation is primarily for those who had registered for the webinar. So if you want to see these presentations before they are all put together and they'll all become a course uh, which you can get on uh, at Macmillan Research, then please register for free um, for the links that would be there. So just to make you aware, coming up next week, I'll be talking about pandemic weight gain and pre-diabetes, what your doctor may not tell you. So this is all around the research that I've been doing actually around dementia, which then led me to diabetes. And I saw some insights there from the research that were very, very interesting. So if you want to learn about that, please register. There's a link below that you can register for next week if you're interested in that presentation. The presentation today, as I said, is on the cancer explosion and um, what I think is related to the pandemic. As usual, I have to be relatively careful in what I say. So for those who are on the webinar, we'll be able to go through some of those details in a bit more detail. So um, I'll be starting the presentation now. This is just to put the pieces together. And as I said, after the first bit of this, it will only be uh, for the webinar people who have registered. Uh, thank you for the people who are on YouTube with me at the moment. And uh, please think about registering for the upcoming webinars that will be put, um, put out. Okay, the COVID cancer explosion. This is a complex topic and one that I really had to sit down and think about to try and understand some of the possible mechanisms that could be associated with this. And I am concerned because I think that this is going to be an expanding problem. And as you can see, that's showing a volcano in the background that is just about to explode. And I think that if this is not addressed urgently or understood completely, we could have significant problems down the line. So important to clarify that this is theoretical, meaning that I will be explaining where I think there are going to be possible mechanisms. And it is important to then try and tease out how this can be relevant across a population. My aim is to give you some basic concepts about some of the things that I think are very relevant, and I'll go through them in step by step. So uh, the first thing that we'll start with is just a basic definition. And you have here this of cancer, characterized by uncontrolled division of any kind of type of cell in the body. And so you have to remember that all cells uh, well, not all cells, most cells have the capacity to replicate, and any cell that can do that has the potential to become cancerous, and it's the uncontrolled division. Now, here is an interesting analogy. Some people could describe the human race almost like a cancer. We are uncontrollably dividing and growing, and we're using up resources that could be for the benefit of mankind. That's an interesting analogy that I've always thought was important to reflect on. And so any situation where you have that kind of division and uncontrolled um, growth will eventually take resources from other parts of the body. So the key learning objectives here are first, general understanding of cancer. And I recognize that most of the people listening may be lay people. So this is just really to give you an oversight of it. The links between immunity and cancer and as well COVID-19 autoimmunity. That's where I think is a huge area. And at last as well in terms of interference, uh, P53, SV40, and I haven't put it in here, but IgG4. And so these are the other areas that I think are extremely important for us to try and see if we can understand in order to see how this is relevant to each and every one of us. 
Now, here is an image of the different types of cells. So it's important to know that there are over 30 trillion cells in a single person. And it's, ex it's estimated about 200 different types of cells with different morphologies and functions. And this is showing different kinds of cells. This is a, a neuron here. This is probably a muscle cell. Um, this one here is an immune cell. This, is, this one is the immune cell. This one here is a red blood cell. This is um, cardiac muscle. So all of these types of cells in the body have the potential to become cancerous. This here is a red blood cell, which is the most abundant cell in the body, 80% of all cells. And you're showing just some interesting information. White blood cells can live for about 13 days, specifically neutrophils, but lymphocytes can live for your lifetime. Red blood cells about 120 days and neurons as technically live for your lifetime. So there are different kinds of cells and they all have different functions and therefore, theoretically, the risk with regards to cancer. Now, here is a slide that I've put together because I thought it was very important for people to understand that when we talk about cancer, as with any disease, it's very rarely a, a linear relationship. What you have, and I've tried to put this in a way that I hope makes sense to you, I've put in four layers. There's general health, there are toxins and infection, there's genetics, and then there's immunity. And so in order to get from here, this part, part of the arrow down to here, you have to break through all of these layers. And this is generally how it works in the body. Very rarely would you find that just a toxin would cause cancer, no. It would require you to have poor health, genetic predisposition, immune failure, in order for just one toxin or infection to cause cancer. And that's very important because my aim is not to cause people to be frightened because the risk in terms of the population is relatively small. And I'll, I'll, before I, I'll explain that in a second, but in the context of what I am concerned about here, here are the potential links. Again, I have here macrophage dysregulation, the potential of P53 with S2 proteins, SV40 um, contamination. This is a recent thing that has come up. Interferon suppression, that's always been known about the virus, and IgG elevation. This is something that has been largely overlooked by the scientific community. I think this is a huge one that we are going to be facing problems with in the near future. But this is the point that I meant in terms of risk. You have here small percentages mean big numbers at population level. So if you imagine one person in a hundred, that's one percent, it seems small. But in a million people, that's 10,000 people. And so you can suddenly see that when you think about it across, say, for instance, a country of 60 million, you're talking about 600,000 people. So even though there are small percentages, and this is important to realize, is that small percentages can still mean huge risk at population level. So at an individual level, that risk is probably small, even if it is 0.01%. A shift in the requirements and the resources in a particular area, in a city that has 2 million people, that kind of shift in resources can be very, very significant. And that's why I think that it shouldn't be underestimated, the relevance of it. And here is now another slide that I sat down to put together. And some people made the point that it could have gone for longer than 2020, but it really does take a lot of time to do it. Um, and this was just showing the number of cancer patients re receiving their first treatment. And this is from the UK in 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Now, there is a thought that in 2020, when we had the lockdown, you can see here that the screening technically would have gone down, but it has come back up by the time you have reached January 2021. And then you can see in 2022 and 2023, you see a consistent rise. Now, I'd like to highlight an important point is people say that delayed screening is probably the reason for that. Now, that is likely to be a part of the process, but 
delayed screening, if you miss a cancer because somebody didn't have their screening done, you're talking about six to 12 months before you have more significant disease. It doesn't just stay still. And so any missing of screening in late 2020 or even in early 2021 should have been found by 2022. And what we can see here is a consistent rise even into 2023, late 2023. And there therefore means there is likely to be a much bigger factor that is part of the picture. This is why where we have to be very, very careful because we don't know exactly what is the reason for these increases, but we can see an increase. Some people say that until you have evidence for the recent or these increases, you are not allowed to say. I look at it differently. If there is something that is different across the population that could be a contributing factor, we have to, from a scientific perspective, look at it and make sure that we have answered that question thoroughly. Good, that's the end of the first part. Um, just before I move on, I'll quickly take a look at um, a few questions here. Um, as highlighted here, any chance of 2019 being added? Yep, I think so. <laughs> I'd have to go back and do it. But yes, I think it's a reasonable point. But anybody can do it because the link was there um, for it to be done. Um, I'm just seeing if there are any other relevant questions here. Um, I think this is a good point. It's not only the jabs having COVID causes this as well, and this is what I'm saying. I think I agree. It's not as simple as just one thing. And sometimes it's the interplay between things that are the relevant factor that we have to be able to look at. And don't forget that sometimes you can have augmented um, symptoms when you combine two things. So it's not always one plus one is equal to two. One plus one can be equal to three or four sometimes. And, and this is what I think that we are seeing in the concept, in the context of the pandemic. As you had here, I've heard of many terrible cancers. Yes, it is very worrying. And the question is, will this trend continue or will it disappear? Okay, great. Thank you very much to my YouTube audience for being here with me. Just a reminder, if you are interested in the pandemic weight gain and pre-diabetes, please register at the link below. Um, but at this point, we'll be moving on for the webinar guests. And um, we look forward to speaking to you again in the near future.